Welcome back to The Breakfast and Class TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. And Ezekiel Nyai Tok is on standby to join us. Good morning, Ezekiel Nyai Tok. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. We join you in no time. Let's check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning and find out what is making it big. And on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper, the banner caption reads... Federal government mulls 2.4 trillion naira palliative as 1.8 trillion naira annual subsidy goes. No provision in 2022 budget. Uh, that's what the Senate is quoted to say. 5,000 naira transport grant for 6 to 12 months. Minister is also quoted on that. No template to reach the poor. Labor knocks government says palliative uh, is a bait. EFCC places Anambra Governor Obiano on watch list. Reps probe 97 billion naira federal government cancer control project. A Nigerian heir to commence operation April 2022. The federal government is also quoted on that. And talking about the West African Senior uh, Certificate Examination. Pay your debts, NECO tells state government. 2023. Throw presidential ticket open. Babangida Aliu tells the People's Democratic Party. And ramping student stone DPO in Ogun State. It was a really, really sad incident. You could actually see pictures. I saw pictures of that yesterday. Uh, that's the much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. All right, away from the Daily Trust, uh, we'll move on next to the Daily Sun. The main headline for this morning, uh, bandits on rampage in five uh, Niger communities uh, with a rider there attack gang rape uh, women. Federal government hasn't paid Abia any dime on federal roads, according to the governor. Today. That's Iqbazu, just beside uh, Masthead. Uh, Emo government indicts Okorocha family, confiscates property. With two riders, returns uh, seized land to owners, accuses him of sponsoring insecurity in the state. Just beside the pictorial there, Governor Baladwili Sonwolu uh, of Lagos State presenting the 2022 budget estimates to the State Assembly in Ikeja just yesterday. Subsidy uh, Senate County's federal government says 5,000 naira not captured in 2022 budget. All right, economic affairs gets lion's share as Sawolu present 1.38 trillion naira budget for 2022. Nigeria receives looted Benin Ife artifacts from U.S. Museum. At last, Air Nigeria takes off April 2022, subsidy almost heating 3 trillion naira annually, laments federal government. President Chopano recommend integration of civilians in new security architecture. National Assembly spends 1 billion naira yearly on fruitless constitution. Review that's uh, according to Edwin Clark. Challenges uh, Buhari to act on AP service structuring. Report now bank fraud perpetrated by insiders, according to the EFCC, says rate at which young men are engaging in cybercrime seriously alarming. Kano Masob hits Northern Coalition. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Sun this Thursday morning. Let's check out the Daily Independent newspaper and uh, the bold caption reads. We can't control threats in our cyberspace, stakeholders are quoted to say. And underneath you have this uh, rider saying, say internet security in Nigeria too open for invasion. And might just be dominating some of the papers. EFCC places Governor Obiano, Willie Obiano on watch list. And militants again attack Ajib facility in Rivers, threatens more attack. We can't continue with three trillion naira annual fuel subsidy. Uh, the minister has quoted also on that, and that's still on the Daily Independent newspaper. We'll comply with Electoral Act Amendment Bill once it becomes law. INEC is uh, quoted to say that. At last, federal government sets April 2022 date to float Nigeria Air. 
Infrastructure education tops Lagos priorities in 2022 as Songolu proposes 1.39 trillion naira budget. That's uh, also another interesting caption on the Daily Independent newspaper. Asset declaration caught Bass EFCC from investigating Dixon. That's it uh, on the Daily uh, Independent newspaper. And finally, uh, we will be looking at The Punch, a newspaper. A main headline for this morning, a subsidy Nigerians to spend 6.7 trillion naira on fuel in 2022. NLC sent it for 5,000 naira palliative. With two riders, the Nigerians to pay additional 34 or 3.4 trillion naira annually on petroleum consumption. Cost of doing business will increase fuel-induced inflation inevitable. That's according to the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Beside the masthead of the punch, reps order probe of federal government's abandoned 97 billion naira uh, cancer center. Unijos OOU IMSU named among varsities with 707,189 wow, illegal admissions. Above the masthead, vandalism oil sector GDP contribution drops by 270 billion naira in nine months. Senate alleges secret recruitment into federal civil service. With 49% of foreign ownership, Nigeria Air starts operations in April 2022. Other stories are uh, on the punch this morning. DPO curtailing Ogun students. A battle caught in Fraka, pelted with stones. Lagos proposes 59% capital expenditure. Songwolu present 1.388 trillion naira budget. As state residents uh, protest land grabbers' invasion, demand Lagos intervention. All right, uh, more stories on the punch. Police bust AKT kidnap syndicate arrest members in Kwara, Oshun. Stop Obiano from leaving Nigeria after tenure. EFCC tells immigration. And the final story there this morning. Police recover body of Jonathan X. AIDS abducted brother in Quara. Bush, those are all the stories you can find on the Punch newspaper this morning. Well, uh, we just uh, go ahead straight to uh, speaking with Ezekiel Nyaitok this morning. Ezekiel Nyaitok, thank you for joining us. Again. Thank you for having me. I will always say that. It is our pleasure. All right, so let's head straight to it. Uh, looking at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning, the federal government is planning to spend 2.4 trillion naira as palliative, as 1.8 trillion naira, uh, you know, annual subsidy would go. Does that make any sense? Is it rational? Absolutely senseless. I will say this with every sense of responsibility. The reason is simple. You cannot pay 1.8 trillion. At the same time, in the papers, we see that they are saying that the, the, the subsidy is getting to 3 trillion. So the first question is, which is the correct figure? Is it 1.8 or is it 3 trillion? Now, if it is 1.8, if you cannot pay 1.8, then how are you proposing to pay 2.4? It doesn't make sense. If, on the other hand, it is three trillion, and then you now say you bring it down to two point four trillion, one can say, okay, but let's look at the differential of the six hundred um, million. Is that where the problem is? But the official figure has been one point eight trillion. So the question is. If you cannot pay 1.8 trillion, how come you now want to propose 2.4 trillion? It doesn't make sense. Point number one. Point number two, we realize that they've pushed it to 2022, very close to election year 2023. And it reminds me of trader money that came up just before elections in 2019. So we're asking, is this another scam? of making money available to be able to pay the boys. And you're asking for a register of 40 million Nigerians. Where is that register as at today? And how is it going to be done so that it's transparent? 
are we having another name for trader money where mr vice president that i was so disappointed disgusted i was so i don't know the words to use that a man that i hold in such high esteem will because of politics bring himself to go through the market and be giving money all those things a man so cerebral i've been privileged to work on one or two committees with him, you know, before he became the vice president. And this is somebody that is extremely articulate, cerebral, and upright. So I don't know how he would get himself into what he did, but that is past. But I hope he is not indirectly endorsing another scam or scheme that is politically motivated. That is the second thing. The third thing is, please, somebody tell me, this is a policy and at a budget defense going on it has no reflection in the budget is this something that just came up immediately or is this something that is thought through and if that is the case which of the budget lines am i finding it reflected in i can't find it it just brings that main question do people understand what governance is all about and I think as we continue, I would like to say a little bit more, but let's continue because this is one matter we must interrogate. Do we as Nigerians really understand what governance is, what government is? Do we know that there's somebody called a driver and that if you buy a vehicle, you must look for a driver to drive and not a mechanic and not a carpenter? We understand that when your electrical gets bad in the office or in your house, you do not look for a carpenter. You look for a mechanic, what they call, an electrician. Now, do we know what government is? Do we know what governance is? Do you know the people that should be in government? Have we been able to draw a line between politics and governance? That's why a Nigeria that is so blessed has that ignoble tag of the poverty capital of the world. The time has come when cerebral people, you and I, must wake up and answer these questions. Okay, but Ezekiel Yaitok, before we move away from this, uh, you, you have economics or those, uh, you know, economic experts saying for government to remove subsidy, government would need to put some measures in place. They need to put some structures. And, and this actually looks like, you know, making provision, uh, you know, for to cushion the effect of um, subsidy removal. It's not about economics. It is just common sense. What is government? Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B of the Nigerian Constitution states without any ambiguity that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. That section gives the foundation to every government policy. I am a businessman. I run my business. The security and welfare of the people is not the primary purpose of my business. Making profit is the primary purpose of my business or being sustainable that is the private sector now government is about security and welfare of the people it is on account of that that government would say one of the basic needs of a system is the fuel and because we want to make sure that the people are not impoverished we provide what we call social infrastructure. We build hospitals and call them general hospitals. We build roads, we build schools, and nobody pays tolls on going on the road. We subsidize a lot of things for the people to be able to live a life within a reasonable context without the consequential hardship. That is government. So if you want to remove subsidy, it is just commonsensical. It's not about economic policies that you will now ask yourself, is this something that has overrun its stay? So there's really no need for it. We no longer have malaria. We no longer have polio. So we kind of dismantle the structures 
or is it something that we cannot afford to continue to do so as a result we are giving an alternative so that that consequential hardship is kind of cushioned so you put in place their own consequential uh, their own cushion is to say we are going to be giving five five thousand naira to two million people this is the most stupid thing i've heard in my life economy thrives on productivity five thousand comes to almost 200 billion monthly that goes into what voicemail imagine mm. if they said Nyaito, please put a team of people together let us see this 200 billion that we are proposing what can we do by way of setting up the msmes you know by way of setting up productive ventures by way of putting up things to engage our youths we cannot afford 200 billion but let's take 50 percent 100 billion let's say about 3 billion to each of the state every month what can you do about youth engagement what sort of cottage industries guy i i i put up a little post on my facebook page and i said look with about 50 to 100 thousand what can you do in fact with 10 10 i started from 10 thousand overnight over 800 people applied 800 I just thought, well, this is this Facebook stuff. I said, if you are serious, no transport for you, nothing, come down to my office. About 500 people showed up. I used one week, morning till night, seven days, to interview people every day. And tears came down my eyes when I heard what Nigerians, Akwaibo might, could do with 10, let's say 20,000 naira. They, I now brought it the highest amount to be 50,000 naira. These guys gave me it on record, mind-boggling, you know, ventures. I could only accommodate about a hundred people because of the funds I had. And so many of them have paid back that money. 50,000, 50. Because I started with a hundred thousand. I couldn't accommodate more. I'm a private person. I brought it down to 50,000. Imagine you talking of two, three billion. It means that at 300,000, I have 1,000 people monthly to give them 300,000 naira. Imagine what a Kwaibong will turn into. All right, Mr. Imagine Nato. how our youth will be engaged. And then they now just want to carry this 200 billion and give ghost people, which you don't have a register, you don't have anything. How are we thinking as government? It bothers me. All right, uh, other um, stories are making headlines this morning. Let's just uh, slide over to the Daily Independent. The main uh, story for them this morning is uh, we can't control threats in our cyberspace. That's according to stakeholders. Um, say, uh, say internet security in Nigeria too open for invasion. I just want to get your quick comment uh, concerning yeah. that. Look, there has to be a national policy that every youth must carry a laptop. Today is the reverse. You carry a laptop, the police will pounce on you. But the way of the future is the laptop. The way of the future is ICT. Instead of Mr. President being the Minister of Petroleum, he should be the Minister of ICT. Because that's the way of the future. Look at what young Nigerians are doing, the unicorns. If you come to a place like Lagos or Uyo, you'll be amazed. As a policy, the Nigerian state must introduce that every child must understand one computer language from primary school, the way it's being done in Poland. So much so that at secondary school, the children working with offshore companies are making more money than their parents in Poland today. I had the um, AIT you no know, ND on my birthday, and the, the, I think the mother is Polish. When he, he put certain things across, I mean, I couldn't close my mouth. And we have a nation where children are being hounded for carrying laptop. What a waste. And because they do not see this, you know, the, the, the cyber world is global. You can isolate by creating an ecosystem you can isolate the fraudsters but because we do not have an understanding of this new generation of this new age of this fourth revolution because we do not have that we have no plans whatsoever 
to control and regulate our cyberspace, all we do is run around. We see a young child with a laptop. We carry the person. If it's done in England, if it's done in UK, if it's done in France, if it's done in Italy, it is no rocket science. Go and copy what they are doing. The cyber world is global. Once in a while, there's a problem, but it does not mean that because there is a problem once in a while, you have to jettison it. It's not possible. The future is technology, and being able to control the cyberspace must be a national concern because we don't have any option or alternative to it. Our youth, that's their future, and we must give it to them. We owe them that. All right, uh, let's also check out uh, this other headline and share your thoughts on it on the Daily Trust newspaper, Nigerian Air to commence operation April the 22nd. Sounds like good news. Sounds like good news, and I'm actually um, optimistic. Um, against the run of play, I think that I will, as much as I knock the federal government from time to time, I like the fact that the federal government will just have 10, 5% shares, the foreign investor will have 49, and then the rest will be shared amongst Nigerians that are interested. I will be one of those that will be interested because, um, you know, Ibom Air has told me that if you handle the, the airline business properly, professionally it is something that is the way of the future and um, i agree with them and you know i heard during your preliminary introductions and um, your banters the fact that you know government will come and say do you know who i am that time has come when i mean you you can't you as the md i don't know i'll look at the uh, the, the organogram you know uh, who appoints who but i think that the federal government should just sit back and be regulatory They've done it in um, this company in um, in River State. I'm trying to, I, I'm just seeing the name, but I can't uh, quite pick it out. They've done it, and it's a success story, you know. And um, um, I can't, I, I'll, I'll remember with time, you know, I think, you know. But the, it, it's a private, um, a, a PPP, a private public um, uh, enterprise, and it's working well. I'm doing a PPP with the federal government today, doing an estate, and the Senate committee came. And they say this was the best estate they've seen in this country where the federal government is involved. Nobody, no minister has asked me, give me a location, the fashioner. There's nothing I've asked for he did not give. And he has never one day told me, um, I need this number of houses. And even the ministry, the, the staff, they just they, are, they act so professionally because they've seen somebody who wants to act professionally. So it can be done. And I would they say that it's a success story of a PPP. That can be replicated. But when you want to be political, because I'm not in APC, and they know I'm not, so you can't come to me and talk politics on an investment and put in my money. No. And they, they respect that. I think the government takes you the way you present yourself. If you just want to, like, talk out to them and be, you know, be subservient, they, they'll match on you. But when you want to be professional, like I've been, they let you be. All right. Uh, another story that uh, you know spread across um, some papers this morning is that of um, the governor of a number of states, uh, EFCC places Governor Willie Obiana on watch list. Reaction. What please. goes around comes around, man. <laughs> I tell everybody when you are in government, be careful. One day you go come out. If you like, bring your brother on the seat. It's just a matter of weeks, and there'll be family squabbles, and you're in trouble. Your best antidote when you are in government is be professional and be ready to walk away and face your past. You can't just walk away. There's something called, you see, Nigeria is getting to that stage where there's going to be accountability. I can tell you this for free. Many things are going to change. That's why I say those who want to get into politics in 2023, be careful what you're going there for. The eyes of Nigerians are starting to turn real red and Things are not going to be like it has been in the past. If your, 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 your motivation is not to serve the people, if your motivation is not going to create impact, if your motivation is to go and loot, just forget it. Because Nigerians are starting to draw a line between the looters and the bakers. There are people in the past who have just been there to loot our commonwealth. They are looters. They are exploiters. That's what they are. And as a result, the cake just keeps shrinking all the time. Nigerians now need bakers. People want to get in there to serve. They want to bake the national cake to be bigger. They are sent, therefore, on a mission to restore this country. 
Those are the people that Nigerians are going to crowdfund and change their mindset and get a new country that works. So, Mr. Obiano, the time has come when he's got to face his past and he's got to face his, I mean, total agreement, not just on him, but with EFCC, on every public office holder that leaves the office, they should keep him cool somewhere and then interrogate his past before he continues. Yeah, but, but there are some arguments saying that, you know, uh, the energy is not consistent. I mean, you not have the EFCC going after almost every governor. It feels like this probably might just be a witch hunt. Yeah, um, there will be a time when we have a government that is not a party. There will be a time when we have a government that is not a party. People don't seem to know how to draw a line between party and government. And the people in power today are not for the essence of the office, which is governance, which is providing the dividends of democracy to the people. They are politicians, which is protecting their party, protecting their own. Come over to our side and you are clean. What, 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 what an abuse of office. So, sister, don't worry. You are on APC. Your sins are forgiven. Pray to God that they continue in power. Even when they continue in power, the Bible says they arose a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. It always happens. Okay? APC, they are factions. All you need to do is belong to the wrong faction, and guy, they come for you, and you cannot always be right. So the best thing for you is do what is right, so that no matter which way the pendulum swings, your hands are clean. That's why the Bible says that the righteous is as bold as a lion. Mine is do the right thing. Don't take solace in changing the party. Some days back, I was told that my friend, uh, Fanny Kayode, has been um, called for private chat. I thought they said that once he gets to APC, that the sins are forgiven. But they say they don't call him for private. I don't know whether he went there and got stopped on. I don't know what it is or what it is. But the fact is that do the right thing and then stay clean. All right. Uh, another story that is making headlines uh that is becoming very troublesome or worrying right now is uh, that of a renewed militancy. Uh, so a caption here in the Independent Militants again attack a Jeep uh, facility in Rivers, threaten more attacks. You see, <clears throat> some of us were the key actors in bringing peace to the Niger Delta. I was the person that was in charge of the rest restoration of the Baramatu Kingdom. I was a consultant on that project. And there were several things we, we did to assuage the feelings of the people. The, 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 the Niger Deltans felt really, really hard done by the federal government. And the way to express their grievances was for them to like take up arms against the system, unlike what we have where human beings are being slaughtered and all sorts of rubbish, they felt if they touch the system a little bit, that they will wake up. And to some extent, I think it worked, okay? Now of recent, instead of maintaining the peace, what you find is something infuriating where you say, if you find oil, you become, you know, Niger Delta, okay, NDDC, okay? Now, they miss the essence of the NDDC. It was not a reward system per se. It was a system set to ameliorate, as it were, the decadence in the society, in the system, in the ecosystem over the years. So this money was to see to what extent they can get the environment, the people, kind of rehabilitate them or kind of create some level of succor for them. So it was not just because you are oil producing, they dash you something. So when you see somebody that has just come in and has no environmental degradation or impact whatsoever, and you say, share the money, I think we're not thinking through the process. You can set up another system that kind of takes care of environmental degradation. And then you also set up a reward system where you say if you produce oil, you get this amount of uh, percentage. Those are different compartments. But don't come and say the 13%, which is not for oil production per se, but to undertake remedials for the degradation of the environment over the years. 
where the people have lost their means of livelihood, they've lost everything that has to do with them, they've been exposed to a lot of health hazards over the years. So see how we can use these funds to ameliorate, as it were, their, 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 their plight. You don't bring somebody in and say, boom, get it from the beginning. They not only lose the essence, they also infuriate the people. But I think it's for us to talk both to the two sides of the divide. We talk to the system and say, please don't bring in more heat. And we talk to the people and say, please, let's see how we can dialogue and get them to do. But let, the, let not the federal government call the bluff of the Niger Deltans. It will be an evil wind that will blow no man no good. At the same time, let us not smite our nose to spite our face. So we are engaging our people, we are talking to them, and I believe that they are listening, but the federal government has to make life easy for us because a stage comes when you appear to be a traitor, and that is when it gets out of hand and it can be really bad. So I think that both sides of the divide must be engaged as early as possible. Okay, so let's coast it down now with the uh, Lagos State budget of 1.39 trillion naira uh, with infrastructure and education topping the list. What are your you thoughts? You know, when Songwolo removed my brother, Ambode, who was my schoolmate, I was very angry. I was like, why are you doing this to me? You know, which is the way we think. But I am starting to fall in love with this man, you know? When you have a budget that lays emphasis on education and infrastructure, it is a budget that I will support any day, any time. The only thing is that I wish he had put health not under infrastructure, but as a separate subhead, because unless you are healthy, education is meaningless. So I wish he had made healthcare, education, infrastructure. Okay, infrastructure to create that platform for the economy to thrive. Healthcare and education. Healthcare to make the people healthy and education to create a template for a sustainable future. If you had put healthcare, I would have, I don't know what the budget is, but the headline would have been healthcare, education, infrastructure. So for my brother Sonwolu, for removing my brother Ambode, I have forgiven you, and um, we are we are happy with what you are doing. God bless you. You are you are thinking right. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Ezekiel Etok, for all your comments. But just one more before we um, actually let you go. Uh, I just want you to get your uh, quick uh, thought concerning that uh, still on uh, you know corruption and all assets declaration. Court bars EFCC from investigating. Dixon. If I had my way, I would not comment on that. All that issue of asset declaration and EFCC and the rest, they're just meaningless to me. Why do I say so? We've seen people who went into office, is, is there on our face, penniless. And then four years after, they own so much estate. So what is what's this ritual of asset declaration and this and that? They are just tools that you just keep, you know, then you can pull it and intimidate. I really don't have faith and confidence in all this asset declaration because it's all over our faces. It's there. It's there. Call any politician and I'll say, what did he have before he got into office? How did he suddenly, you were a, 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 a lecturer? We know what your salary was. We know where you were living. We've seen you for the past 20 years. We've known you. And then you get into office and you come out and the first thing is you get into Shelter Africa Estate and then boom, this is mega house that you have. And then your children are now schooling abroad. Bros, waiting be your salary. So what's all this ritual that uh, about? So that the day you want to escape to another place or the way that they want, they want to you to come to their side, they just pull a piece of paper, show it to you, and then you kind of sing, start singing a new tune. It, it's something that is more vindictive. People are not afraid of it. It's like, look, just play the game and you are good to go. So I'm not, I'm not really as excited as people would expect me to be. I'm not. But a day will come when we'll have a governance that is faceless as far as justice is concerned, where they don't care whose ox is God, where you've got to do the right thing, if not so, you do the crime, you do the time. That day will come in Nigeria in my time. I tell you this for a fact. So let them keep dancing naked. Arabanko, All right. we help them. <laughs>
Many thanks, Ezekiel. Yeah, I took, uh, thank you so much for making our time to be part of the conversation. We really do appreciate and we look forward to having uh, more of you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the privilege. I do not take this lightly. Thank you. All right, All right. that's um, the off the press segment uh, on the breakfast this morning. We'll be taking uh, what happened this day in history, November the 25th. Stay with us. <laughs>